This is EE2902 Week 2 Lecture 1. So today we're going to start latches and flip-flops, Chapter 7, Section 7.1 through 7.7. These timing diagrams I've copied from the book uh, a priori, so we'll use them later in the lecture. Uh, let's get started with the course, per se, because last week, week 1 was simply review of 2900. But speaking of 2900, so just like EE2900 or equivalent course, if you have transferred in, uh, we will basically start with the digital with digital logic components. Okay. Digital logic components that will be used to implement memory. Okay? Full stop. However, we will be switching quickly to behavioral VHDL. But the reason why we are doing this is we must, this is why we are starting with digital logic components, because we must understand how the design functions at the component level. We need this so we were able to, so in order to visualize hardware functionality. Uh, but also understand uh, that we will very quickly move away from latches. So we'll talk about what do we mean by latches shortly in this lecture. Oh, by the way, we'll be switching quickly to behavioral visual. I just noticed this you will do in lab one. So that's this week, okay? Let me save this. Uh, we'll be switching quickly to build visual, but we'll be very switchly, we will be very quickly moving away from latches because behavioral VHDL must not synthesize latches as these devices, that is the latches, are not clocked and could lead to asynchronous. Now there is, you shouldn't think that asynchronous is bad, but this course is about synchronous logic. In fact, there's an entire chapter in your book about asynchronous logic. We just won't be covering it. Okay? And there, so as a rule of thumb, we should not synthesize latches. But then let's get started now. That is, the goal though is to create clocked memory using feedback. So let's get started with feedback first. So let's just try, let's start with using KISS, keep it simple, stupid. So if you want to create memory, right, let's start with the inverter, simplest gate. Okay. Then let's do this. Just do feedback. And does this is this memory? So when you power on the circuit, let's say this was at a zero, this becomes a one, this becomes zero. So that's a stable configuration. So yes, and then what about the other one? This is one, this is zero, that's one. Yes, this is memory, but and usually you should get used to this, this is written something like this. It's called cross coupled inverters, okay, for obvious reasons. However, the problem with this is, however, 
no input signals. So let's fix this in the sense, let's try this. So step two for the latch is try, let's say I use NOR gates and we covered the reason for using NOR and NAND in 2900 hopefully you covered it in the equivalent course that is in terms of CMOS implementation it leads to minimal number of transistors so let's call this QA let's call this QB so let's do feedback like this and then this one is that so now what we will write out is not really a truth table as you will see it's called as a characteristic table So basically, this is called as an SR latch, okay? SR latch or set reset latch. So let's call this QA at T plus one, that is right after. A change and you will see why it is why I have labeled the column like this but there are four possibilities of input okay now where we start out is imperative as you will see shortly when you look at the timing diagram but let's start out like in the sense when R is 1 and S is 1 we know the outputs are 0 yes because the output of an OR gate when the any input is 1 is a 1 not that you get 0 it gets fed back doesn't matter what these lines are these are 1 so we know that this is zero, 0, So I'm starting out. Now suppose set was 1 and reset was 0. Okay, so we're looking at this row, the third row. Well, when set is 1, we know QB is 0. 0 goes back. Since we know now this is 0, 0 or 0 is 0, nor is 1. So QA becomes 1 and QB becomes 0. So in case of... Uh, reset is 1 instead of 0, it's the complement of this. So now you can see why this is called set reset because of these two entries. But why is it called as a latch? Where's the memory? Suppose R and S are 0, 0. Okay. So what happens? So suppose this was 1 and this was 0. So let's do it this way. Let me do this step by step. So I'm going to use blue to look at so this row. Okay. So if this was 1 and this was 0, okay, so let's say both of these, so let's use red, or 0, 0, you can see that 1 gets fed back, right? 1 or 0 is a 1, nor of that is 0, 0, 0, 1. So it remains the same. Now what if, let's use a different color this one so in other words okay I flipped this that's why you got to be careful let me write this properly QA is 1 QB is 0 the analysis doesn't change okay and you can see that 1 or 0 is 1 0 0 0 1 so that's good and then let's look at the other case now so when this is 0 and that is 1 what happens is, well, just analyze this, 1 or 0 is 1, 0, it's fed back, 1, so good. So in other words, what happens is state doesn't change. So here is the latch functionality, okay? So that's why it's called as a set, reset, latch. However, there is a potential problem with this, what is called as potential race condition so let's look at the timing diagram so unlike 2900 timing diagrams are I mean 2900 also it's important but 2902 they're even more important because well it's it not only helps you with delay but also understanding the functionality in uh, detail if you want so let me take this go to the next page is the timing diagram and let's look at it so what happens 
is initially R was 1, S was 0. So the latch is not set. It's reset. Okay. And the moment set goes to 1, R goes to 0. So what happens is this is step 1. So this change causes this to occur. And then you can say that this is step 2. So it makes sense that once set changes, QB changes first. Okay. And then the change in QA gets propagated to, sorry, the change in QB gets propagated to QA. So that's it. So there it is. And you can follow this timing diagram through. You should. But what's interesting is this last case. That is, if these were 1, 1, okay, so both of these were 0, 0, and then I go to 0, 0, what happens? Let's see. So... These are both 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. So 1, 1, 0, 0. And the, well, the easiest way to do this is to just draw this out. So let's look at, using a different color, this part. So again, you got to be pretty careful with this. Let me be careful of the labeling. R, S. B. Okay. So it was 1, 1. These were 0, 0. Okay. So now these immediately go to. Uh, so let's do this. And then let's say these go to. That was initial. So let me use different colors. So black. These go to 0, 0. Okay, and then what happens is zero gets fed back, so zero, 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 so it's, this becomes one, one, correct? But then one gets fed back, and you can see, since these were zero, zero, you get one, one, so you get zero, zero, so these start oscillating, okay? So, however, so this is... Uh, oscillations uh, but practically uh, the circuit will settle into a state that is QA is 0, QB is 1 or 1, 0 um, or 0, 0 because of delay okay however the fact that the circuit could oscillate must be resolved so in order to do this let's look at so the step three is gated sr latch okay so the idea behind this gated sr latch is that we are having these oscillations because both of these signals if they're if r and s are equal okay that's the issue there so let's not let's make sure they're not equal so the gated sr latch we will use the nand uh, specification or nand gates okay so it's simple enough that if we do this Here is R, here is S, and we've got to be careful of these bubbles, as you will see. So here is our, by the way, your book calls this clock. Okay, I like using enable because it's not quite clock, and I'll show you this when we draw the component diagram for the D latch, which is next. Um, but anyway, the only thing you got to be careful of is since I have these bubbles here, if you think about bubble pushing, right? So this actually, my point is, this becomes QB and this becomes QA. You can easily see that if you push the bubble. So let's say you want to make this NOR and leave this as AND. So, so you push this bubble here, you make this bubble go here. Yes, this will become NOR, but this bubble going here means there should be a bubble here. So this is actually QA. Yes. 
So this is the gated uh, D latch, but it would be nice to be able to store a zero, simply a zero or a one. I mean, you can set and reset. And this leads to step four or design four, which is called the gated D latch. Uh, there is, uh, uh, well, it would be nice to store zero or a one, actually, this is more important reason than this. Cut this. Uh, we can use the design above to eliminate uh, 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 to eliminate race condition. I mean, we could have used this design, but this enable, as you will see, will become the clock when we do the flip flop. But for now, here, this is what I mean. Right, so get a D latch. So what we can do is this, and actually. And what I wrote before was correct in the sense condition. And we would like to store a zero or a one. Okay. So basically, our characteristic table. going to look like this that is if our enable is zero our D input we don't care what it is our QT plus one, I mean just is at QT if enable is one this is zero this becomes zero this is one this is one this becomes a one and here is the symbol for this so let me write out the symbol here which let me just write out the symbol here Again, your book and lab manual, etc., calls this clock. It's not that is here. Q and you get a Q bar, as I'll show you. I'll just highlight this. I don't like to call this clock because it's it's the enable. It's not really clock in terms of functionality. Anyway, so. Let's get back to our design. So here is QA and here is QB, and it'll, it'll basically become Q naught if you call this Q the complements of each other. You can see that from up here. Now, here is our D. Let's say this is our S, our set input. And then, whoops. So this is S. Then, to avoid the race condition, I just knot this. And I just screwed this up. So there, what the heck am I doing? Sorry, it's late. Just not this. Here is enable. Okay. Enable. And this goes here. And then here's the feedback. Okay. Very simple. And let's look at the timing diagram for this. Also up there. I'm going to go over my 20 minutes. I'll try to keep. I should be able to keep it within 23 minutes. Sorry about that. But again, he calls this 
clock, see, okay, this is D. Well, let's just paste this, take a look. So here it is. And you can see that when enable is 1, my output follows my D. When it's 0, it doesn't change state. Okay, so when it's 1, it follows um, D. Okay, very simple. But if there are any glitches on enable q of t plus 1 could change or well, not will could change value in other words we have a level sensitive design we have a level sensitive uh, design or storage element we would like an edge sensitive uh, storage element so in other words we only want this queue to be sampled on the edges of a clock, either the rising edge or the falling edge. Because the idea is there is less likely chance of any, I mean, it's not zero, as you will see. There are uh, concepts called setup time and hold time, which we'll cover later in the course. But the edge sensitive design is a much better solution than the level sensitive one. Not only that, it turns out there is a, so here is, the master slave D flip flop. It turns out it's a very simple, it's very easy to do this. So, what you can do is you can take two of these latches and you can cascade them. However, here's the let's call this QM. Here's the big kahuna, and I am going to go over 23 minutes. I'm sorry, I won't, it won't be too long. So, let's say this is our D input. But then, for this enable signal, let's say you send in the clock, here's the big kahuna. That is, I simply not the signal for the next enable. Here's Q bar. So let's look at the timing diagram, Q. So this is the master. This is the slave, if you will. So if you notice, the master follows on, the master gets updated when the clock is level, okay? The slave gets updated, which is Q, on the falling edge of the clock. That is, the master gets, uh, the QM goes to QS on the falling edge. So uh, the cool thing is with respect to D, it, the net effect is watch. Let me put this in red. Is to update on the falling edge of the input clock. And the intuitive reason is since QM gets updated on the falling edge, sorry, not the QM, since QM. Since QM gets updated on the when the input is 1 and QS becomes the value of QM when the input is 0, with respect to D, it's sampling. The net effect is to sample on the falling edge. So let's see. So right here. Right here. So in other words, this in red. This is basically here is the symbol for this D. 
it's negative edge triggered so you put a knot you put this little triangle saying it's edge triggered clock q q bar okay so master sleeve d flip flop okay so we are done with this lecture so tomorrow in lab Just a couple of announcements before I call it a lecture. So tomorrow in lab, uh, we don't don't do the simulation. We will do model sim uh, in lecture three of this week, and we'll use it starting in lab two, but not for this lab. We'll not do simulation, but you should be able to answer all questions. There is, I think there are five parts, but remember the lab is due. Lab one is due before the start of lab two. So you have a week to do the lab. I don't think you can finish it in lab because it's pretty involved. But hey, if you can, you don't know what you're doing. Point number two is do not, as you can see, the course starts moving at a very fast, very fast pace. Do not lag behind in the course. All right. See you next lecture.